This is Mari Robeson of Love Lulu Creative, a podcast that supports and celebrates artists and creative entrepreneurs while giving back to the community in a unique and meaningful way. This is episode number 25, and it's my one year anniversary. Yay! I am so excited that um, I made it to a year. <laughs> <laughs> and I, we're just going to keep this going because it's been such an honor and such a privilege to interview these amazing artists and creative entrepreneurs. And they're so generous in sharing their stories and their advice and how they're doing things and how they're making a living doing these, making a thriving living, actually, being a creative. And I'm just so honored to have come up with this crazy concept to do this podcast because it's really fed my soul and I'm going to keep doing it. So I hope you guys are still enjoying all these episodes and please continue to share them. And if you haven't subscribed, if you would subscribe to the channel, that really helps too, or share it with somebody and ask them to subscribe. That will always help with uh, the mission of supporting the arts. And today I have such a lovely interview for you. I have Stephanie Bostock on today. She is a fine artist, but the, her route to becoming a fine artist is interesting. And I think it's a really inspiring episode for anybody, not just artists out there. Her story is powerful. She used her art as a way to overcome and find her joy again um, after dealing with a really pretty significant illness. And I think this is really a special episode. I know I've used art as my go-to in my toolbox as a way to heal myself. And, um, you know, you use it for a lot of different things, but it's definitely a, a wonderful way to kind of open that conduit and connect back to your joy. Some people might be exercising and, and others, it could be cooking. So this is just a really wonderful, uplifting episode. So I hope you really enjoy it. And thank you guys again for supporting this mission and for being here with me. And I'm just looking forward to another exciting year ahead. Uh, stay tuned for this episode with the very talented Stephanie Bostock. Hi, Stephanie. It's a pleasure to have you on the podcast today. I'm really excited to speak with you and learn all about your creative journey. Hi, Mari. Thank you so much for having me on your podcast today. And I'm really excited and honored to be here and talk with you. Um, I want to say before we get started, um, you are a light and an inspiration in all that you're doing. Oh. And your, um, your beautiful artwork and your podcast and the support that you're giving to young artists. Um, I just want to start out by saying thank you. Wow. Geez. That's really sweet of you. Thank you. You're going to make me a little teary eyed. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, it's, it's a real um, honor for me to be in this position. So it's, it's been really fun. I, I get to meet all kinds of interesting people from all over the place. So um, thank you. That kind of caught yeah. me off guard a little bit. Oh my goodness. It's, <laughs> it's just really very cool. So yeah. thanks. Yeah, it's kind of a fun thing. Um, okay. So you have such a really special story and I'm really excited. And I think it's going to really inspire a lot of people to hear about your journey. But before we jump into that, I just kind of want to go back to um, know a little bit more about you. So where whereabouts did you grow up and, and where are you located now? Sure, sure. Um, I was born and raised in the Chicago area and I'm currently living in North Carolina and I work out of my home studio. Um, to give you a little background about myself, um, I went to Purdue University and um, I studied in their school of design and I have a Bachelor of Arts in industrial design, which is product design. Mm -hmm. um, and as everyone knows, everything that you look at has been manufactured and it's been designed by a product designer. So that's kind of a, a, my background. Um, I have more than 20 years of print media, marketing, and industrial and graphic design experience. 
Yes. And um, so were my, you working for a, a company during those years, during that time? Um, or were you yes. freelancing? Mm -hmm. Okay. I did. Out of school, um, I was working as an industrial designer, and I was actually, um, I started out um, designing exhibits for trade shows. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's a lot. It was very interesting and very fun. It was a small company, and boy, I sure learned a whole lot about mm -hmm. um, the annual, the actual uh, manufacturing process and everything. Um, and then um, I, after I, I didn't work there for very long, my husband kept moving us around, and um, I ended up working for a local daily newspaper um and i was in their art and marketing department um and i really got a lot of experience there also in more in graphic design mm -hmm. so i was designing newspaper ads print media brochures logos billboards um you know all sorts of graphics um and then um Following that, I went into my own, um, I, I stopped working and I went back home and um, I had my own consulting firm and I did marketing and graphics design um, just kind of as it came to me because I was known in the community. So um, I've done a lot of different um, creative things um, and I love to um, do a lot of in-kind um, in the communities that I've lived in and I do fun things like, you know, paint furniture and murals and, and macrame. And I just, I just can't seem to get enough. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a, that's great. We have kind of a similar background. I did do a lot of graphic design as well and still do. Um, and it's interesting, you bring up working for a newspaper. My early 20s, I had to design a lot of ads for newspapers. And now my daughter works for her school newspaper. And it's really one of the best things you can do. I'm just saying, all you young designers, if you have an opportunity while you're in college to, or artists to work for the newspaper, because you've got to design quick, you've got deadlines, you've got to make it look good. You have to, you'll learn all in design, you'll learn graphic, uh, Photoshop, all of those programs. It's a really good, um, I think it's great. And I think it's great now that you're a fine artist too. And myself as well, that we have that, that graphic design background so we can design our own ads or <laughs> whatever it sure, is. So sure. it's, it's, it's helpful. Plus. Yeah. Plus. Yeah. And even if you are an artist these days, it's helpful to just even take a couple courses in Photoshop or Illustrator. It'll, it will come natural to a lot of artists and then it really helps them when they're marketing their fine artwork. I think I, I agree. I mean, you know, being a fine artist now when I, you know, over the years I've done, I've, I learned so much and I've been able to do so much for myself as far as, um, like I said, you know, logos and print material and all sorts of things. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. marketing is a big part of, of, of being an artist. So so then there was a moment in time where you decided that you were going to uh, take a leap and really pursue being a fine artist. Can you just kind of enlighten us and share that experience yeah. for you, why you, why you went down that path? Um, I, I would love to. Um, uh, my, um, my, my artist career, really, my fine art career and working full time started about five years ago. And um, I was um, I was diagnosed with thyroid cancer, and um, I went through all, all sorts of um, you know emotions and feelings, and um, of course treatment and all that comes with something like that. And I kind of fell off into. Um, a deep dark hole. <laughs> mm. um, I needed um, I needed something. Like I, I got very overwhelmed, and I needed to get a grip and kind of focus on something. Um, and so, actually, my my husband and my family were the ones that just kept saying to me, 
you know what you have to do, you know what you have to do. You have to do what you really love. And um, they kept saying, you need to paint. You need to paint. Just get a canvas and get started. And um, so that's what I did. Uh, you know, one afternoon I just went and bought some canvas and paint, which I have done many, many times throughout my lifetime, but I hadn't done it in a long time. Mm. And um, I, uh, I sat down in my kitchen and I started to paint and it was like, I can't describe it. It was like an explosion that happened. And I started putting, all my emotions were like pouring out of me and I started putting them onto the canvas. And I was kind of like, I want to say I had kind of like this maddening moment where <laughs> I was like painting everywhere. I mean, there was paint flying around my kitchen. It was like on my floor, on my rug, on my cabinet. <laughs> and my husband would come home. Your husband's and, like, um, maybe we could start with some smaller watercolors. <laughs> yeah, and, and he was coming into the into the house every day and he was looking around and he kept seeing more and more paint and he was like, oh my gosh, I can't believe what you're doing. And I was, I was so excited and having so much fun um, that he finally said to me, oh my gosh, you've got to like get out of the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> You're really so on the can, like, eat my dinner. <laughs> yeah, and so he did. That, which is kind of a statement that every artist husband has ever said. <laughs> get out, get of, the out of the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> my table is currently covered with paints right now. <laughs> right, right. So um, you know, through through all the stuff that I was doing as far as using that kind of as like an outlet and a meditation, um, you know, I needed to get out of the kitchen and that's kind of what happened as far as me looking out my kitchen window one day and seeing my little um, house in the backyard, which is um, now my studio. And um, I just mm, thought, oh my gosh, cool. I need to be in there. We need to get all the junk out of this shed, I called it at the time, it, and turned it into my she shed or my art studio. Um, so wow. that's kind of what I did. Mm -hmm. Oh, that sounds really wonderful. So you just happen to have an extra, like a little granny unit or something on your property? Yeah, I actually have a, a small house that's behind our house. Um, and uh, it's brick and windows and what, what we did is we gutted it and I put in a couple of skylights to let in some natural light and um, painted it myself and um, just started, put my drawing table out there and started painting and drawing, put my easel out there. and So um, were you doing this, all of this while you were going through treatments or it was, was this afterwards? It was really just pretty much after the treatment. Yeah. Because I, after the treatment, I got so down um, and I was so consumed with what was going on that I couldn't focus. I needed to kind of um, put my attention on something else. Um, and, and once the painting started, I just, it, I couldn't stop. It was it was amazing. It really was. It was exactly what I needed. And my family knew that I needed to do what I love. And it's just such a passion. Um, and as many different creative things as I've done in my lifetime, this was what I needed at this point in my life. So, so, so it was after you had treatment and, and we're, we're we have good news, right? You're, you are, you're free of well, this. Actually, I, I am living with what they call an elevated tumor marker. So I don't get the classification of NED, which is no evidence of disease. Um, but I, I am five years out this September and um, I'm doing well and I have great doctors that follow me closely. And um, as far as they know, nothing is growing or changing so I do kind of have that in the back of my mind every day um, and it's just something that I'm living with because it's something that they can 
detect in the blood, you know, they can um, see that in my blood, but they can't see it on an actual scan. So <laughs> let, let, let me ask you some, some questions. I'm going to sure. go back a little bit. So what was, uh, was there anything going on in your life prior to, were you working full time and everything prior to being diagnosed? Um, actually right before I was diagnosed, my oldest daughter got married oh. and, um, it was, um, an amazing wedding. She married a lovely young man from Australia and we had a beautiful wedding in Sydney, Australia. Oh, lovely. And, um, and so no, I, at the time I was not working. Um, oh, okay. and so, um, after they got married, um, I was diagnosed and then kind of everything kind of started caving in. Mm. Uh, and, and, um, and this was five years ago. Yeah. Oh. And so I had the surgery to remove my thyroid and, um, um, 56 lymph nodes in my neck, um, because it was spreading into my lymph system. And then, um, you know, the treatment for that is a very successful, very um, good treatment called radioactive iodine that I went through. And then um, after that, I just let myself kind of get consumed with everything that was happening. It's kind of like a, um, a feel sorry for yourself moment. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, um, and my husband said to me, Steph, you know, if you would just paint, I think that it would really make a difference in your life. And it's really great. That's such, that's powerful. Yeah. You know? I mean, so, and in essence, it's almost as if the, the, the painting was a connection kind of back to your, your joy and therefore the greatest distraction from your fear and pain and, and all the other things that you were going through. Yeah, just, um, it's, it's just, it's really changed my life. And sometimes I think, Ooh, maybe I was just led to do this at this point in my life because, you know, I enjoy it so much and I love kind of the meditation of it and the so, uh, Let's talk about that. So you, yeah. you mentioned even on your website, you say that painting is a form of meditation. So so how, how could you describe that a little bit deeper? Yeah. Um, um, I mean, I, when I paint, I don't really have what you call like kind of a, an agenda often. Um, I, I love to just paint whatever I'm feeling. So um, I use that, that artistic or creative um, energy kind of as a release of feelings and emotions. And it's really kind of a therapeutic exercise for my mind because your mind is, you know, it's controlling your entire being. Mm -hmm. um, so I like to paint from my mood and channel my energies into my canvas or whatever I'm creating at the time. And it's just like a huge escape for me. Mm -hmm. um, I, you know, you, when you paint, you paint alone. Um, so it's me and my thoughts and I play my music mm -hmm. and I have my paint, my brush, my canvas. And then that's kind of when all that magic happens. Mm -hmm. Um, and, um, I feel like my art is really my heart. Um, so, so when I paint something, I'm painting. I'm really painting it for myself unless I'm doing like a commission for somebody, something specific that has to be a certain color or size or whatever. Um, but I'm just painting for myself. And then I hope that when somebody sees it, you know, they, the viewer, they, they feel something, they feel mm -hmm. happy, reflective, mm -hmm. um, joyful, contemplative or something like that mm -hmm. you know well and what i i love that you're saying about this is that i know um for myself when my sister passed away my go-to for dealing with anything challenging in my life is to paint and those are paintings that are just for myself they're just things that i it's a way of processing like you said and um i 
for me, it's as if uh, the grief is on one end of the stick and then the painting is on the other end of the stick where it's mm -hmm. like joy. And, and so when I paint, I can find that connection again. And it kind of yeah. keep, keeps me alive <laughs> yeah. so when, I'm going, when I'm going through something really challenging like that. Then it shifts, you know, once you kind of process and you work through things and things get better, um, then, you know, there's the painting that you just do for pure joy that you just want, you know, you just want to make everybody bring them happiness when they see it. Oh yeah. So. I mean, even, even when you have those moods where they're maybe not so great, that painting just kind of turns me around. It oh, does. Yeah, me. Absolutely. It's my, it's my therapy. It's, it's, it's just, um, it makes me feel good. It, it's so positive. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's a yeah, part of me that I enjoy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I usually only will paint though, if I'm feeling, if I'm feeling really good. And, and that's usually, like you said, the cat's there, the music's going, <laughs> like, yeah. that, that's the happy place right there. Um, so it's hard for me if I'm in a, I, well, that's not true. I mean, I think that that's, it is just a way it's very, it can be very, very therapeutic, but um, going back to what you said, like you were talking about how sometimes that you just paint these for yourself to have this expression and kind of reconnect back to your, your, I keep wanting to say joy, but reconnect uh -huh. to what makes you happy. Yeah. Um, that's something anybody can do. So if anybody is going through something really difficult or challenging, um, just pick up a brush. <laughs> That's, that's, that's the most amazing thing about it. You know, mm -hmm. people channel their energies into all sorts of things, you know, exercise or whatever it might be, um, knitting or, um, but, but for me, it's painting. And mm -hmm. I think, you know, anyone can paint, mm -hmm. um, children paint, uh, you know, um, you learn painting usually when you're a young person and, um, you can paint just about anything. I mean, mm -hmm. people say, oh, I can't paint, but no, really you can. All you have to do is pick up a brush. Right. Yeah. The, it's kind of funny though. I could never paint what you paint. <laughs> Seriously, like all my friends that do kind of uh, do more abstract art, I'm like, I'm, I am my graphic design always kind of pulls through. It's always like in the lines and, you know, it's hard for me to kind of burst out and have that kind of expressive type of painting, but yeah. um, maybe one day I'll, I'll get there where I can just start s s putting some paint down. It always seems like it ends up really muddy if I do that. You can <laughs> do it, Mari. You can. <laughs> the encouragement. I, I, do my whole life. <laughs> I know. And you know, it's just, I, but the thing is, it makes me really, really appreciate those who do paint in that style and that genre of, of art. I, cause I, it's like watching someone play the piano. Like I can try forever and it's never going to sound good. <laughs> it's just not my calling, but wow, I can but really, really appreciate, <laughs> I appreciate people though that can play the piano. Like I'm in awe of yeah. it and I'm, and I'm in awe of people who can paint in, um, abstract shapes and color and um it's just but that's great i mean i think there's just everybody it's a form of expression that everybody can do and i i wanted to kind of talk about how it is a healing it can be used as a very powerful healing tool and maybe it's not painting i mean it could be creating a meal i know when i rearrange things in my home it, it also is very uplifting or walking on the ocean or there's by the ocean you know there's so many different ways that we can connect to that higher part of ourselves that brings us joy and and paint de painting definitely is an avenue that that's takes us very there true. that's very true and it happens to just be my avenue mm -hmm. that i'm fortunate enough to be able to share um and, and it I, sound, I think that it's working. So I think you should just keep painting. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry about what that doctor says. That's old news. Well, we, are, we are on health and healing and painting. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and also too, when I, you know, when I started painting and I, I was just doing it really, like I said, for myself and I started like 
posting it on Facebook and my Instagram. And then I started having family and friends say, hey, I really love that. Can I buy it? And I was like, no, you don't want to buy that. And they were like, yeah, I want to buy it. And my husband was like, yeah, sell it. (laughs) (laughs) So um, I never intended on having what I'm doing um, turn into a small business, but it over the past five years, um, it's turned into a small business for me. And yeah, that's um, wonderful. And I'm, I'm learning and growing every day. Always. We all are. Amen to that. <laughs> <laughs> well, so now I, I, I also saw um, that you have your artwork, you're, you're using it on surfaces like clothing and different products. So tell me about, tell me about that. How did that all come about? Um, right. Um, that I kind of pulls in a little bit of your industrial design background too. It sure does. It sure mm-hmm. does. Um, and, and you know, there's so many different, um, companies now you can just look online and you can find probably hundreds of them, um, that can take, um, something that you've painted, something that I've painted, something that you, someone has created. It doesn't have to be a painting. It could be a drawing. It could be anything. And they can transfer it onto um, clothing or home goods or just different types of items. Um, and so I, I thought I'd kind of give it a try. Um, and so I, one of the main things that I, I started doing was because I do a lot of large work and it's very abstract. Um, uh, you know, I, I took those abstracts and I digitized them and I sent them off to these companies and they take it and they, um, you know, scan it and transfer it onto whatever, um, material or whatever you're wanting to create. And I, I started with scarves, um, because they were kind of large squares and, um, the, the comp, I tried several different companies and, um, some of them were reproducing really well, really beautiful, um, using good materials and things and others were not, um, but it was kind of a trial and error thing. Um, and then once I started doing the scarves, I, I branched out. So I went on into things like yoga pants and tops and um, like wraps. Um, I've done so many, many different things. And then I started doing, you know, you could take a painting and you can actually put it on a mug or um, a phone case or I, I've done yoga mats and um placemats for your table, pillow covers, and on and on. Mm -hmm. The list just goes on and on. Um, So if anybody out there is listening and they want to do something like that, all they have to do is, you know, create something and then look online and find a company that you want to give a try and send them your artwork and they'll print it on whatever you like. What was, what would be one of the companies that you would recommend? Um, well, let's see. I use something called Red Bubble. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know if you've ever heard of it. There's Red another- Bubble is, um, also, uh, they're a European company. Okay. And, um, Zazzle, have you ever heard of Zazzle? Mm-hmm. Okay. Zazzle. And, um, there's another one um, that I use specifically for my clothing, and it is an international company, um, and it's called Vida, V-I-D-A, mm-hmm. um, and um, they manufacture some beautiful pieces for me. Mm-hmm. Um, so those, those are just three kind of off the top of my head, mm-hmm. but there's so many. I know, there's, there's so many. Jeez. Um, yeah, I think I just thought of another one, Art to Wear, oh. um, which is another company, and um, they do mostly um, wearable, what I call wearable art. Mm. Uh, and so those are some companies that if anybody's looking 
to, you know, when you go online, you'll see just, they sent the, they, they make them and they, they, you can see hundreds of artists on all of these. Oh, right, right, yeah. You, you could actually sell your own, own items on these, on these websites and, or you can manufacture them, have them manufacture them, send them to you, and then you can sell them yourself. So that's mm. kind of a different option too. So where can people find your work if they want to purchase it on those products? Do um, you, you, I, well, yeah. I have some of it online on my website. Um, and then, um, you know, some of the other companies like the red bubble and the, um, Vita, I have my own, um, kind of little, um, I don't know what you want to call it, that they feature my items specifically and people can find things like that, like the scarves that I'm creating, um, at Vita and the tops and, um, Fine. that's yoga. great. I'll yeah. put all those links in the show notes so that people okay. can, can look at that. The other one that I really like to use too is Spoonflower. I use them for all my fabrics and they have a sister company called Roostery that will do like tablecloths and placements, more, more home goods. Um, You're right. You're right. covers and things Flower. like that. They're yeah. here in North Carolina. Oh, are they? Yeah. I, I love them. I have been with them, I think, since they started and they've grown and they've been wonderful to work with. Really yeah, they do and work. Yeah. Yeah. So. Well, that's wonderful. So, well, I always like to kind of wrap up with some advice and I'm certainly sure you have a lot, but let me ask first, what was the best uh, business advice that was ever given to you in a creative aspect? So business um, advice would be, um, you know, I think to, to just pursue whatever your passion is. Um, I don't know. I'm, I'm struggling with this one a little bit. It's okay. I know a lot of people feel that way <laughs> when I, when I kind of hit them with that question at the end, but, um, you know, I, I think your advice about just really following your, your passion is, is great, especially when it comes to uh, maybe working through something challenging in your life, using your art to, um, as a, as a go-to, as a really good tool in your toolbox to just kind of reconnect yourself and put things in perspective and start yeah. to feel good and know that everything's going to be okay and everything's going to work out okay. Right. Um, and, and, um, you know, life is full of challenges and, um, no one knows their path or their journey. And, um, so, you know, you just have to kind of follow your, your passion and the things that you feel positive and strong about and always kind of look for those open doors and um, explore those types of opportunities. And, um, you know, each, each day is, um, you have new inspiration, um, all around. And, um, if you're creative and you enjoy being creative, you can, um, just do whatever you feel like doing and it doesn't necessarily have to be painting. There's so many different ways to be creative. Mm -hmm. That's true. So it's true. I say don't wait and do it. <laughs> That's the best advice ever. Just right. like somebody said that, just do it. <laughs> right. Do it. And, um, and, and for a, for a, for the younger people that um, you're inspiring and, supporting those You're inspiring <laughs> you need they need to 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 always dream and they always need to believe and look ahead and and go for whatever it is they want to go for mm -hmm. um, don't like for for someone like me who it's it even though i've done all sorts of wonderfully creative um endeavors throughout my lifetime um, it took something like um, my illness to actually shake me up a little bit and say, do what you really want to do, which is paint. Mm -hmm. um, and um, I say to those younger people, don't wait, do mm -hmm. it whenever you feel like doing it. Mm -hmm. And, 
and enjoy it. I love it. That's just wonderful. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Stephanie. This has really been a treat. I love having you on the show. And um, you are September featured artist. So I, I think that's really appropriate that you're hitting your five-year anniversary. And we're just going to celebrate the next 50 years. <laughs> oh my gosh, thank you. I'm, I'm so, so happy and excited to be a part of your podcast because I enjoy listening to all the artists that you interview and um, you, my dear, are a, an inspiration. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much for joining me today. If you like this podcast and you'd like to support it even more, you can join me over on Patreon dot com slash Mari Robeson and become a patron of mine. If you're a patron of mine, you'll receive bonus episodes every month only for patrons. You'll also receive 20% off all the merchandise in my online shop, Mari Cartel, and you will be receiving free printables every month that will be of my artwork and they're some really fun things. You can follow along on Instagram and you can see what I'm creating just for my patrons. I would deeply appreciate it. It would help me keep the lights on and it would help me pay all the fees that it takes to put together a podcast like this so that I can keep supporting all the artists, keep bringing you great information, keep paying it forward to the next generation of artists. It's just a wonderful thing and I would really deeply appreciate your support.